Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're going to continue working on our full stack application. We are now at a point where we have set up a backend setup with a database where we have a database, a MySQL database running inside a Docker container. We have then last time connected our Spring Boot application to this database using our application properties setup. We then created a simple persistence entity, so a user entity, which connects to the specific entity in our database, and our user repository, which then allow us to get a user entity by ID. We inside our user service then very simply just showcase it works. We simply print to our console, user repository, you could get user entity, and then in this case, we just hard coded one for the first entity in our database, and then the get name. We would now then instead of just hard coded instructing information to the console, like to create an REST API endpoint. And in this video, we're just gonna be creating two simple endpoints, just like get user by ID and get all users. So first of all, I will just remove this from the constructor. And just to note, we already have our user repository auto wired, so construct and inject it. So we actually have a direct access to our database through our user repository, through our user entity. So I would create a public and it's going to be returning a user entity so public user entity get user by id we're then going to be taking an integer id and we would then very simply just use more or less the same but instead of printing it to the console we would then simply return our user repository that user entity by id and then id and instead of filling the name we just return the user directly so just very simply when we call to get used by id we give it an id as a parameter send this id to the database through our user repository and extract this user we would then also like another method called instead of returning a single user entity it's going to be returning a list of user entities and it's going to be called get all users I'm not going to take any parameters and still be going to be returning our user repository dot find all so in this case I'm not going to be creating a custom method inside our user repository because we very simply already have this find all method which is more or less just built in so we can just use that it's ways to create something ourselves but just very simply, we now have two methods inside our service where we can then get a user by ID and get all the users. So for now, just a very simple setup. For now, I'm just going to be returning a user entity directly. But later on, we're probably going to do some refactoring where we would actually like to handle what if there's no user. So for now, we would just return null, which also could be okay, but it's not the best way of doing it. So we would now inside our controller create a new Java class called user controller. And we're then going to annotate it using rest controller. And we will then need our user service. User service, it's going to be auto wired using constructor injection. So when we create oh, the instance and start our program we're going to be automatically creating a risk controller and because it's defined as a risk controller we can also do a get mapping and we then simply showcase or define for this api what is our mapping going to be and in this case we're just going to do slash user and we're going to have a public in this case returning our user entity get user by id once again and this is then going to be taking a request parameter and we're simply going to be an integer id so now i will shortly showcase and use the postman which is kind of like a tool to call apis that we now actually will be able to use on spring boot directly so just a quick note, when we create a Spring Boot project, if nothing else has been defined, it's going to be automatically set up to run on localhost port 8080. 
and we can then call localhost port 8080 slash user to then access this get mapping. And we can then pass it a request parameter named ID. And we will then very simply send this again to our user service, get used by ID, and then pass it the ID again. So note again, this is a very simple setup. We're just sending the data like through the layers. But in a more like real case, a more complex case, we we'll probably do some manipulation or some extraction or something like that, at least inside the service. Because now the service is not doing much. It's just sending the data straight ahead. But let's see if it actually works. So now we have a very simple get mapping. We can call slash user. We need to pass a request parameter of type integer with the name ID. And it should then be sent all the way to our database and we return to our REST API. So now if we start our Spring Boot application, and we can also see here that it is running on port 8080 as mentioned. If we then open first Postman, I will leave a link in the description, you can download Postman, just a very, very simple tool and very useful when working with APIs. If I first just call localhost port 8080, we can see here, actually something happened in the console because it was like knowing that we were connected to. And we can also see here that we actually got a 404, which makes sense because we are connecting to our application, but nothing is, exists on just the base route. And note if I say instead of doing localhost port 8080, did for example localhost port 8081, we do not get any response because nothing's there. So if you're actually able to just call localhost and get a 404, this Spring Boot application is running, but it's not working because there's nothing there. So if we now call slash user, and first just try without a request parameter, we get a 4000, not 4400, which is a bad request, and be telling us something went wrong on the server side. And in the console inside Spring Boot, we are being told that required request parameter ID. So we've got no ID and we expected an ID. Because for now, we just defined that we need an ID. We could also define that this is not necessary. So give it all or don't. But for now, it needs to be given to even work. So inside my core parameters, I would define ID. And node is a bit fancy what we said about doing it. But it's more or less the same as just calling local host port 8080 slash user question mark ID equals one, for example. Because I know we have the user at ID one. And we here get our ID of one, it's Hans, his email, and his status is active. And note this is extracted all the way from our data SQL file, which is used to set up our table for our database. We then inside this database inserted a single use Hans. This MySQL setup or this database setup is then ran inside a MySQL Docker container, which we then connected to using Spring Boot then set up a flow of a persistent layer with a user entity connecting to the database or matching the database, user repository connecting to the database based on the user entity, user service, then handling the main functionality. And if you wanted to edit something about the user, we're not doing much now, but it's good to have later. And then the user controller, which handle our REST endpoint, in this case, our get mapping on our slash user with a specific request parameter. So now we're actually going through our database to our backend. And we then move in like the next step when we have front end, we then use the front end to then, for example, call this localhost port 8080 slash user with ID to get the user one. But instead of just having user one, let's see what happens if we do user two, we get nothing because then null is sent all the way through. And when we return null, here, of course, nothing's going to be shown because there is no user to. But just note, it's not crashing or something. It's, it still works, but it's not pretty. We might also want to return some information that there's no user. Maybe that's just fine, depending on how you want to build it. But I would also like a setup where if I just call slash users, for example, we would like to get a list of all the users in the system. So we would have another get mapping. Let's actually just copy paste to make it a bit easier. 
Let's have get mapping. Let's call it users. And instead of get user by ID, we would get all users. And I'm just gonna leave with no request parameter. So no matter what, just get all users. And we're gonna be using the service method we created before, where we call get all users. And now we need to change it instead of returning a user entity, we're gonna be returning a list of user entities. And this is not gonna be the best showcase because obviously we only have one user, so getting slash user with ID one is the same as getting slash users. So if you now rerun our Spring Boot application and just give it a few seconds and it's now ready on port 8080, we can once again do slash user with ID one, good hands. And if we now do slash users, we will once again get hands. And note, we're actually now getting a list of users. And of course, we're gonna have a list of a single user for now because there's only one user. So probably in the next video, we're gonna showcase how we can then insert into users. Now we can extract the users, but we would then also like to actually insert a new user. But for now, we have a pretty good base setup with our controller persistence and service where we can extract information from our database. So if you enjoyed this next step in our full stack application service journey, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.